Okay, she's still working. I'm gonna go like this. <laughs> oh, no, oh, it's all over the floor now. Oh, I know, I'm gonna get it. Uh, oh my, hello. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the Sun Dragon Side Show. The Dear Becky and Lizzie edition. And boy, have we got a question for you all today. Well, at least it's a question for us. That's. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I want to go first to make sure I go get in. Well, but, and I have other things I wanted to talk about today. Let's <sighs> let's do our introductions and. Hi, <laughs> I'm Rebecca. <laughs> I'm the owner of Sun Dragon Art and Fiber, in sunny and probably going to be hot, and maybe a chance of rain because it's that time of year. Brevard, North Carolina. I'm Liz. I'm the millionaire. <laughs> <laughs> you have different glasses on today i do i couldn't find my little black ones you so. couldn't find them i remember dropping them somewhere and going i need to remember where i dropped them but <laughs> it's not a thing so not i'm looking i'm like i don't recognize your face at the moment i'll get so. used to it it's okay it still looks good so i'm but bigger these were my first cat i had mm -hmm. i have these blue the blue light glasses I've kind of given up on. That was a thing for a hot minute. And I had some cat kind of cat eye ones. Yeah. And Bless you. <laughs> don't touch my shawl if I sneeze in it. <laughs> what else am I gonna do? Can't sneeze in the open air anymore. That's just gross. I mean it was gross before, but um so I'm hoping I can hit a couple of things before we hit our question because that's going to take us like the rest of the time all day. Mm -hmm. um, and people will be like, yay, because I don't know, people just really love this and what's behind me. And, you know, okay, so <laughs> let me get my shop bag out. And you can get your very own shop bag from us, it's like 20 bucks online. Swag, yay. Okay. I have to do some shameless plugs, you know. Um, masks, notion bag. Okay, two things in here that are unrelated and that's gonna make all kinds of crinkly noises. Um, unrelated to the Dear Becky and Lizzie thing that we'll talk about for the rest of the time. One is that, um, oh, I gotta show these these later. These This is, did I ever show you um, the one pair I tried out. This is the collage with the with the with the, the non-firm cord. Oh, it's that's like so gross. It's like a wet noodle, but it's not wet. I used it as a stitch holder this morning for my morning meditation and trying. And first of all, it wouldn't lay flat because it's like the collage squares have a firm cable and a soft cable, and this is the soft cable, and I don't like it, so we don't carry it. Um, and then to try to push the stitches over it, it was like trying to push it over yarn. It was not fun. Okay. Done with my side vent number one. Okay. Um, so we talked about Mushishi yesterday and shout out to Nancy. She bought like half of our inventory. So if you wanted any of those colors, you better check because some are gone. And she, okay, she got the Oceanic. She bought us out of Oceanic, but I have been able to order more or at least I've tried. We'll see what comes in. Um, the colors we can't get back in. I was able to double check on that. We can get the graphite back in. We cannot get the indigo back in. We cannot get the stained glass back in. So if you go watch yesterday's episode and those were colors you liked, what we have is what we have, buy it now. And until next Wednesday, you can save you know, with the code. Um, watch yesterday's episode for that. Um, so... I want to say everything else we can get back in. We didn't order everything because we're not out of it yet. We tried some new colors though. If they come in like by Tuesday, I don't think they will though because of the holiday. Um, we will show them off on Tuesday, but otherwise it'll go back to the old price and it might even go back. The price has gone up since we last ordered. So when we take the sale off, the price, the regular skein price might go up and we apologize in advance, but that's kind of how business goes. Ah. And you know, somewhere in all of this, we are a business too. So this is more fun though. Anyway, uh, <laughs> so I pulled out the project that I am doing with the harvest that I mentioned yesterday. So this, you know, 
this guy right here. I'm at a spot in it where it's all dark and broody. And, but there's still some light parts in it. Like part of this row is light and part of it's dark and broody. And I'm doing the um, favorite flannel by Alicia Plummer. So it's got like a flannel texture to it. It's fun to let some, a simple yarn, which I could just do straight knitting with, but instead I am doing how this guy works is like every fourth row, it's a knit one, purl one texture. And then everything else is knit. And so you get this really fun, bubbly flannel like texture. But this is, I haven't made it very far in this. I'll just say, this is this sweater. It's gonna be pretty and dark and broody and a wonderful fall sweater. And I don't know if I'll get it done by the fall, but I will try. So eventually y'all can encourage me. Um, I will say I'd forgotten until I was knitting with this. This has browns and tans and maroons. And then there's some like orangey red in it. It's not just maroon with those colors. And it's really fun to watch it just kind of go boop a little bit with, with the little slubs of silk too. So that's a follow up on yesterday's i'm i'm trying to arrange things and talk at the same time this is why i don't knit and film at the same time right um and then because everybody wants to know how it's going <laughs> i know well and because it's probably i would hope it's going to be in the mail before we film again i want to at least try to get it in the mail before her birthday i may not um it, at this point it's not getting to my niece before her birthday but I have two more rows of knitting. They're long rows of knitting and the bind off to go. But I got through the lace section and I'm trying to hold it in the direction that, that it you know should be seen in. The cords on the likey wanna flip up, but I'm showing you some of that it lace looks work. So cool. Mm -hmm. And you want it yard and chicken through the lace work. The the I row did. you just did was supposed to be in the teal, but for two rows. Well, I've changed the colors yeah. up in a lot of this. Um, here, here's my proof of yarn chicken. This is how much was left from my first skein of turquoise. Um, the way, this is the Scottish Highlands. I'm stepping on Papillons. Um, this is the Scottish Highlands by um, Kay Hopkins. And the way she wrote it is if I had followed her, her color order, starting, let's see here, all the way through to where I'm at, all of this would have been in black, this whole section with the, the eyelet row above and below would have been in black. And then I would have gone back to the teal for the bind off, I think is how it would have looked. And instead I am doing, I wanted as much of this as possible to, to be teal, turquoise, whatever color we're calling it right now. Um, turquoise is her favorite color. So this is supposed to be turquoise. turquoise. And the color of the yarn is turquoise. You said teal and I've said I teal said and you're knitting with teal. I'm knitting with and teal. And so, yeah, anyway. <laughs> or is that turquoise? I don't know. Okay. Gonna pause for a second. But um, I wanted as much of this as possible to be the turquoise. So I did the lace work in the turquoise as well. And I'm going to finish it. Um, in in the black because I don't know how much further this will get me anyway. And the leftovers from her Christmas present are a different color. Some people might look at it and say, I don't see the difference, but I see a difference, so I'm not gonna use it. Um, but I'm really excited about this. It is lovely. It is too long for even for the needles and for me to show it off to you properly. I will take a photo of it and put it on social media and I can hold my camera up on Tuesday, but I'm hoping this will be in the mail on Tuesday. So, or whenever we, whatever we figure out for Tuesday, because I have, I have an appointment when we usually film on Tuesday. So we're still figuring that out, but you know, um, but I wanted to show you all that <laughs> and say, you should make one too. And if I ever have time and energy, I will make one for the shop. But here's the thing about making one for the shop. I have so many projects going. Ah, <sighs> that means adding one more in and not finishing all the old projects. It's not a thing. Not sure where my priorities will be next week because they keep changing. So, um, <clears throat> okay. I just want to get that out of the way. 
because we have other things we're going to be doing for a while now. <laughs> a very simple question. A very simple question that turned into, <laughs> I don't know. In fact, I got the, uh, I got turned the, into start counting list. Yeah. I got the text on Tuesday and Rebecca said, start counting now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I went, and we kind of did and we kind of didn't, but, um, so Liz, what's our dear Becky and Lizzie question today? Dear Becky and Lizzie, <clears throat> how many Papillons <laughs> have you Excuse completed me. and how many have you, or do you have on the needles? Do you have the pattern memorized, signed, lonely, or I only have three Papillons? Um, can you read the first sentence of that again? Cause I was coughing really loudly. How many Papillons have you completed and how many do you have on needles? Let's let's go through this maybe semi backwards because <clears throat> and do you the have end, the pattern memorized? The pattern memorized is I think I think is something that we've we've talked about before, but we can address right now. Um there are parts of the pattern I can intuitively go with once I know where I am. And I have done far fewer than her. But I would I would say for both of us, and you can elaborate, no, we don't have the pattern memorized. I think it's unless you are a math genius who really, really loves that kind of stuff, I think it's kind of impossible to memorize fully. I don't even know if, if Marin has it memorized, but go ahead. Um, <clears throat> most of section two, I know where everything <clears throat> goes because there's no middle and there's no ends. That when there's stuff, middle work and end work, that's you can't memorize what i like to that. call the bubbles in the middle the red squares and orange squares and green squares and blue squares those those you can get used to how they're supposed to go especially with stitch markers and kind of go oh i'm doing this now blah, 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 and not look at the pattern but yeah. then the in but for me the in all of the in-betweens um <clears throat> i have to look at how many i'm supposed to count i think for you you can, you, you have more of a, she, she will talk about, well, in this section and that section, it's like he, sh who, he, who should not be named, um, rattling off the names of Star Trek episodes. And I'm just like, I know the episodes. I don't know the names of the episodes, but when you know them well enough, <clears throat> that stuff comes easily. So she's like, oh yeah, section 15, this happens, you know, or I'm doing this. And it's like, I have no idea what you're talking about. These like not, not stripe 11, but 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 and See 18. what I mean? This is like, this is like Star Trek names of episodes. <laughs> I don't know what numbers these are and she knows what numbers they are. And then once you finish the pods down mm -hmm. here, this is all like, like I've, I've kind of, it's not that I have them memorized. It's that it's set up in such a way that the bubbles make sense where they go. The red Once one's you're fresh. really, really used to it. Yeah. So it, hold that back up again, because like this section right here, these three, this is the same square. It's just shifted over 10 stitches. And, and so that you can know if it's in the right place. Like what I love about her pattern is she has pictures of each section on the, that page. And so you can look at the picture and say, is mine looking like hers? And if it's not, you know, something has gone horribly wrong. So in anything <clears throat> that has worked down here, like these, especially like this, this and that like these weird arrowy pointy things in the center those are those are not as intuitive and the stuff and on the ends these. right yeah yeah mm -hmm. if it's a partial bubble on the ends the um there is a rhythm to them that after a while you're kind of like okay i'm decreasing the amount of stitches even though i'm adding one on the end mm -hmm. and so you could get i have done Usually, so many of them i know exactly where i am in the pattern but, but you still have to look at the pattern. I still have to look at the pattern. Yep. <clears throat> um, I saw someone on the butterfly knit along page, and I see this often of saying, I don't know where to start in the pattern. And and we always tell people it's not in the first few pages. She has a lot of setup work in the first few pages and uh, one page that looks like instructions, but it's stitch counts to help get you, you look back at. I don't know if it might be better if it was at the end, but at this point, this is where the pattern how the pattern is. Um there's a big giant page one at the bottom of the start of the actual pattern. Cause this person was looking for like, where do I cast on? Where does it say cast on? It does. It actually says on, it says, on the I top mean, of it's, page one. And it's a lot of, and the, the page, the giant page one is at the bottom. Yeah. 
but there's the the pages of the physical pattern not the intro or the notes or the stitch count or the pictures is numbered it, it it's it's really like page five but it says page one because it's the first page of actual here is what you knit and if you're if you're reading through all of that without looking at the page numbers it says cast on five stages. at the very top corner at the yeah. very top corner mm -hmm. so but if you look at the stitch count page the page that it's, it is more of a reference guide to help you make, know where you are as you go like all on a lot of information on one page you'll go wait what i use if you don't know what it is i use that page um after my eyelet rose on the moth variation sometimes my stitch markers will slip so i'll go to that page and find the road that I'm and make on sure and make stitches, sure all of my tens are in the right spot. Cause it, that reference page really does. It's, it's like all your counts and where your stitch markers should be and everything. How many sets And there's of 10? another page that has all of the instructions for the red and orange and green and blue squares that those squares refer to like when you see them in the pattern. And again, you should buy the pattern. It is so worth every single dollar you're going to pay for it. Best 14 it's bucks like, I've ever spent. It's magic when these come out. But um, the, they're in the middle of your column, you'll just see it say red square. And if you don't know what that means, suddenly your stitch count is off and everything is off. If you don't do the red square, which is a box of instructions, there's one page with a picture of the entire thing, again, for reference guide. And at the bottom, it even says, cut this out. Or, you know, I keep it on the back side. I have a sleeve protector and it's always on the back side. No matter what page I'm on, that's on the back side so I can flip to it. And um, it's, you're going to need it the whole time, basically, to, to look. So when it says red square, you flip it over to the red. It's really a rectangle. You know, it's a box. And um, you start at the top and you go down the instructions. And then Most you go definitely. back to where you were. Yeah, something to help you keep track of where you are. Anyway. Um. I tell people all the time, and this kind of goes to your page one, all the time. The most difficult thing about this pattern is the knitting and crochet culture that we're in where we skim the pattern, we make assumptions, and then we want to riff on it. Or, you cannot, you have to follow. Or just thinking if you, well, and sometimes skimming the pattern and looking over the pattern is overwhelming and you throw it away yep. and never do it. But it's because like, yeah, you can't make assumptions with this pattern um the intuitiveness of it is not i can look at it and it makes sense it's if you do it enough times it becomes in, in my opinion again the, everything we say on this show is our opinion but right? like so if you, if you take your post-it note and you do one sentence at a time mm -hmm. one line at a time it works and because there's so many short rows in this pattern that's what makes it work and that also is what makes it so you there's no like other than the very beginning there there's no like well here's row one and row two and there's rows five and six which become a repetitive row throughout the whole thing but after that it's not like well i'm on row 22 it's i'm on section or i'm on stripe i'll call it because there's three big sections three sections and then there is there, there's i call them the stripes but they have the bubbles and stuff there's there's um parts within a, a those sections is so it's ugh over back and forth back and forth back and forth and that with your the the color changey or whatever your main color is and then you have a five and six row of your mm -hmm. um contrast color that's five the and whole six. stripe five back and forth and back and forth and back and forth and over and back and forth and back and forth over back and forth and back and forth over back and forth and back and forth over contrast color five and six you know and and it's straight knitting but because of the pattern it looks like it wibbles and wobbles and it's so pretty and so let's look at them um <coughs> So, okay, there I, was how many finished and how many on needles. And again, I want to get mine in first, but if you want to, if you want to say in, in general, in, in general, <laughs> I did not bring all of mine. In. I know it. We still have one in the window. I took mine out because I have so few. I can oh, do I it. have one on the chair back there too. I have two Which over chair? there. Over there? But yeah. My, yeah. I'm not sure that. Anyway. Um, if you want to see the ones that we're not showing off today, you'll have to make a request. Then I found a bunch of works in progress, but go ahead, show us yours. <laughs> well, I can say I have three finished and I have two on needles and one of them will I most likely never get finished because the yarns discontinue and it's falling off the needles. And I wasn't really, I was excited, but not when I started it. And we now I'm not excited. We can just off and leave it as a... We have to get back on the needles first. 
I can do that. Some of, well, some of it might have, anyway, we're going to see. I can do that. Okay. So I'm trying not to slip on what's on this on the floor, but, <laughs> okay. So what started all of, all of our lovely, you know, podcast vlog series, whatever you want to call this off was I think I had just finished this or was about to finish this. This is my first yeah. one that I've ever done. And this hangs just below the register. This was my, my first Papillon. I'm just, I love it. It hasn't been hugged in a while because it's been hanging under the register. Um, this is made with fingering weight on the size four needles as uh, instructed. And it's only two yarns. This one is, <coughs> it's not a cough yarn. This, this one is Queensland Perth uh, Rainbow Reef and Cascade Heritage Silk Real Black. And the Heritage Silk Real Black, I think, I think both the Cascade Heritage Real Black and the Heritage Silk Real Black are very dark blacks. They've switched mills. Some things have changed from when this was made, but they still work. So again, this is like a stained glass window and I love it. And it is my favorite and it is my first. Okay. And then my second, I went, ooh, let's do another color changey, but let's have it look let's try to have it look like a monarch butterfly. And so this is my second, and we've had multiple people buy this combo to, um, to give it a shot themselves. And it won't always fade in the same sections in the same ways. And I use, I use Cascade Heritage Wave Solar for my main color. And again, the real black in Heritage Silk for my contrast. And then I had it's actually got sparkle in it, but I had a little bit of electrolyte from Plymouth. I use scrappy whites for the end because the whole monarch butterfly thing, right? So, and this one feels bigger than the first one, but they were done on the same needles with similar weight yarn. I think it's how it was blocked and how it's been hanging. That makes it feel like this one might have come out a little bigger. Um, aggressive blocking can, can shape them up a lot. And then as we saw yesterday though, with the Mushishi is sometimes that blocking doesn't hold. Sometimes it shrinks up a little bit with age or how you're hanging it and, or not hanging it, you know. So um, this one was started after the one of the ones that's still on needles. But this is my, um, I tried, this is my first attempt at the moth variation. And you can kind of see the moth has, has the fancier bind off at the bottom. Has the eyes. It has eyes in the middle, yeah. I did those. And um, <laughs> if you choose to change colors in the moth and follow her instructions, you don't have to, but if you choose to, I was following her color combo. So I had like six colors in a pop, which is the pink. And this is in Amano Aini, which is technically a sport weight yarn. It's kind of almost got fingering yardage, but I did it, I want to say on a five. You did it on a five. On a five instead of a four. And you can see it's a little bigger. I, I never blocked this one. I kept meaning to. I still have all the ends that I haven't woven in. So this one, you know, is in whatever state you want to call that. Um, the other two are completely finished. Um, I dug this one out. This is the, this was my third that I still haven't finished. And here's where it's fallen off the needles. It's not that bad, but it's in a oh, short row. Well, I'm thinking I might want to take it back to like section one or something, mm -hmm. but this one, I was just trying out a different fiber and the concha, both of these yarns have been discontinued. So I don't even know if it's worth I it did, anymore. I did my sisters in that, I double strained both Mirasol concha, them. yep. And, um, and Barocco quinoa. And there are cotton blends. This is a cotton and wool. What we have left on the website is what we have left. And um, you can kind of see if I pucker it out here how far I got. I'm in the middle of section two on this one. And I should say, um, holding this up again, let's, let's hold up the, my first, my classic. When we talk about big sections, <coughs> you can see where the thicker stripes are that aren't as wibbly wobbly. So like this is the bottom of section one and then section two comes to here. And then section three is the bottom. And so, um, and then within these, what's between the black are, are the stripes or the parts instead of sections. It gets complicated when you're trying to talk about what's going on where. But um, last one for me, and then, you know, it's the Liz show. <laughs> I decided 
to try one that was more moth like well, another moth variation. And look, here's my pattern. There's that picture, right, of to keeping track of the whole thing. Um, I don't want to show too much of the pattern on camera. And this is just stuck in my bag. Um, I use one of the Puno giant cakes. This has been discontinued. So, and what I thought is, is there's like three different sections of color in one of these cakes. So I was like, I'm going to um, do one color for each section. So I got done with section one and I balled off the rest of the dark stuff, this much of it. Cause there's m way more than enough yarn in one of the Punos to do a Papillon. And it's a, again, it's fingering weight. And this is how far I am. That um, looks really cool. Isn't that cool? I need to get back to this. I haven't touched this in a while. We even and since found we're talking moths about these, that look like right? this moth. Um, so here, I'm going to move it maybe more to the middle. I've got it on a 60 inch cord just so I can try to show it off to everybody. But I'm only so like, so section one is the dark. Section two is the medium color and section three will be the light. And I forget if we did anything for the pot. We had any thoughts the, for the, oh, the pods the might pods have the dark again, are right? going to be the okay. dark. Um, Cause it'll be that light golden yellow with the dark mm, eyes. Oh, it's going to be so fun. So um, the moth version where the dark stripe was on my original has little eyelets if you choose to do them. And I'm doing the eyelets in the next <laughs> colorway, the next chunk of color. Bless you. And oh, so this you. is as far as, and this is so soft cause this is alpaca and merino and silk. And oh my gosh, it's so squishy. And I'm using um, just the Cascade Heritage. I want to say snow. I don't even think it's white. I think yeah. it's the cream color as my contrast. So um, yeah, that's where I, this is. So this is my fourth, but like I said, my third, no, my fifth, Maybe but fourth. my fourth one will, or third one, one of the ones on needles will probably get finished off as a sample or something. And, and this one, I hope to actually finish. I wanted to do this for morning meditation quite a few days in a row now, but I'm on like the return row of the cream, which is which is boring. not as exciting. Yeah, yeah, thank you. I was trying not to say boring, but boring. So <laughs> um, I have to knit straight back across and then I have to do an increased row in the brown and then I might get to some of the fun parts. So there's some prep work before it's something exciting for morning meditation. Although people keep telling me if all I did was knit, Somebody would still watch. Sticks and toilet paper. Yeah. Okay. I'm done. Liz, have fun. Have fun. I mean, you know, I'm still going to talk, but I, I know. <laughs> so, um, trying to, this was my first one. And I started it while Rebecca was, she, she had finished section one, the big section when I started mine and <laughs> mine. Oh, was that your, is that your this very first my one? Very first one. I first was one? working on the bind off on like episode two. And um, it's on a 10 and a half and out our, of two and a half balls of Ito. And it's, it's big, it's worsted weight yarn, it's, which she it's said, ginormous. I know, but it's ginormous. And like our very first episode of, of our very first show has like, like, a billion hits. No, it's got, it's got like 2000 views or two and two, 2.5 thousand. Does that make sense? No. Yeah. Yeah. I don't yes. Know. And no 2,500 views. I mean, all the, our other views, all our other videos are like hundred views, you know, like people love the Papillon. I do too, but that one's amazing. Okay. That, is this your this second, is my one? second one? Should I be helping you hold these up? No. Nah. Cause then I'm going to try to actually knit. It's, it's going to be gonna look cool. Anyway, it's, um, <laughs> This it's was, huge. This oh my, my gosh, these one. are like bigger than I remember. That's because they were on 10 and a half needles and I've moved down to a nine. <laughs> oh, oh, that's why. I've gotten used to seeing you knit on like um, this almost one, normal needles. This one was, I wanted a, a morning shawl. So I did a morning papillon. Um, and by morning, you don't mean, yay, the sun's up. I mean like M-O-U-R-N yes. because. Because anyway, you do that. I do you wear that. stuff for morning. Yes. So she, she, she offered to dress in mourning with the implosion of my relationship and I didn't want to give it that much credit. So, I mean, it needs credit, but the person that he who shall not be named doesn't. So, yes. you know, it might be still so a little this bitter, was my but it's second, only been two months. Sorry. Go ahead. Third one is hanging in the window. It's the 
The third you, one is your froofy French one. My right? froofy French one. It's made with <laughs> froofy French yarn. Come by the shop to see it or ask us to put a photo up. Or if you really request hard enough, maybe she'll take it down and show it to you. But I not right now. My fourth one is the one I sent to my sister for her birthday. Or purple. For, yeah, mm -hmm. it's purple. Um, it looks kind of like that with purple and black. But it's thicker because, yeah. you know. It was on a 10 and a half needle. And then... All of the rest of them are kind of out of order because I don't remember. Who knows anymore. when you finished them? So but wait, we're up to four. Yep. Okay, I'm gonna knitting and keeping track of numbers. I don't know if this is gonna so work. So five but. and six, we're just gonna count five and six. Um oh here, I should I should we should hold both of them up at the same time. I'm gonna five help. and six. Look at me. I did I did this one and then I did that one. They are look, you can see me through it. 30, it's like shadow theater. Well, 29 different colors of um, Daydream, Dye Daydream Works. Dye Works, and they're the exact same colorways in different orders. Oh my gosh, this might have to be our cover photo, as much as I love my papillons. And um, <laughs> I wanted to see, like, to be able to show people what the different contrasting yarns would do. Same colors, different contrast. Yeah. And people go, that can't be the same colors. They're not in the same order. No. They're not in the same order, but they are the same, like, variety of yarns the same colorways with different contrasts yeah. and that's gorgeous and then this is like stained glass gorgeous yeah. so they're gorgeous in different ways you know so wait that's six right yeah okay seven would be the butterbeer that's in the window butterbeer's in the window oh it's on the chair yeah it's right? on the chair okay and then that's yarn baby that's what seven this would be eight this one I spun all the yarn except for my contrasting color, which is teal. Um, Got a yarn barf knot. This is why so I don't knit on camera. What? Eight. So you spun. I you spun, spun the all main the color. main color. What the heck? And then that's just yeah. amazing and awesome. Eight. Eight. I'm trying to remember. Nine. Oh, it's your sunset. Is the sunset? <laughs> and they they probably aren't in that order, but. Mm -mm. Nine is the sunset. We're just trying to keep a tally. Ten. Dark and broody. Dark and broody in Lorna's Laces. Oxygen. And this one you, is one of the, no, it's not. This one, okay. You so played around with color. I played color around with different us. color works. In I'm thinking of this. your Lorna's made, Laces one. I made the five and six stripes. The Pokemon balls. I made those all black instead of, so, mm -hmm. and then the eye down there. Once you see them, you have you can one. Never... You finished your your purple Lorna's laces, right? No. The, the with the spark with the with the fleckies, and you were changing between the purple. No, and I haven't the... finished that. Oh, one. never that's mind. That's another one that's at home. That yeah. And There's then... some that you've changed what the main and the contrast and is I've got between one sections. Here. Okay. And then so that was that ten. I'm sorry. That should be about ten. That's ten. Nine or ten. That's ten. ten. Let's call that ten. And then this one is my Peterbrook, Peterbrook Farms. Farms that doesn't look Peterbrook Farms because the stripe, but like at the very bottom, <laughs> you can tell the difference in the, mm -hmm. in the bubbles, but it waves through colors. That's it 11. Just, yeah. 11. That one's gorgeous with um, Patagonia as Patagonia your is my contrast. And I think there could potentially be another one or two out there. So I finished. We're at, we're at 11 finished. 11. We think that I could find and bring it. And the then, two up there we counted and yes. Your, okay. Yes. Eleven finished. Is Eleven finished. On. Probably about a dozen finished. Somewhere in the vicinity of a dozen. And okay. then and then I, I I started all right. So I have one for my mom, one for my sister, one for my niece Emily, and one for Kaya. So that's four. They're in here. And then I was like. I know I have a lot and they're squirreled away in different parts. So I found what I could and I think I have 15. On needles? Like, mm -hmm. so a dozen finished and 15 on needles. Mm -hmm. Oh, so and one on a crochet hook. So we're getting really close to like 30. Yeah. If you count the done and in progress. So and you were like, I, I have done some that um, switch the contrasty colors and this is mid row be careful it doesn't fall off the needles oh my gosh so the top is got the red bubbles and the blue contrast and that's section one and then section two i've got the blue 
with the red contrast. And, and that is in Juniper Moon Zoe. Zoe, yes. Cotton and linen blend. To change it over, I just did a really simple mosaic um, slip one, knit one. You say really simple mosaic. It was in your head. It, yeah. Which it's was awesome. Just, you know, instead yeah. of the eyelets. Um, I got a mohair one that's mohair held with. This was my winter one that I never finished because then it got warm and it's okay <laughs> but all the all the blues have a mohair help oh you can't them. even see the fuzzy halo i see a fuzzy halo it's amazing yeah barely oh there Just you go barely mm -hmm. um i have a cotton cairns one and it's it's and just what, working and out ultra funky. pima and ultra cascade pima. ultra pima is your contrast yep. right okay i have another one that's all ultra pima just darks and light I have my oh with that red pop oh wow oh yeah I have my ghost it is linen um the Euroflax linen is the main color and then the um is the contrast right or is the Those, contrast and then the um, um the Liana Liana is the the color and I have two different colors so one a linen for the and like a viscose and one blend. For, or the mm -hmm. Pokemon balls and let's see what else oh i started a cumulus papillon a cumulus is it's a cumulus rainbow right it's, it's cumulus gonna, rainbow is going to be peacock it's going to shift through blue. we have um a friend shout out to amanda made um when we only had one color of cumulus rainbow and she did one out of the aurora borealis mm -hmm. it took like what four skeins or something four, yeah it was and she did it a little more she's she's our like knitting genius who she did, did it, it without without she stitch did markers. one stitch marker or stitch markers around she, the middle she marked the center and everything else she just counted i like having you know like if you look at mine in progress here i've got stitch markers every 10 stitches yeah. from where she tells you to place them so this is my my night happy two That's shades of black two shades of black or you like can black actually see the thick because one is just a little thicker than the mm -hmm. other so you can see how they go I have a shadow at home that's out of the Luminosa. Mm -hmm. um, I have, yeah, my four, I have my zombie one. This is the the zombie fade. And then I still haven't gone back to do the zombie barbecue one because, you know, I have issues. Because, you know. So, like, all of these here and probably five or six still at home. And... And you, I have, and you have the Encore Tweed one. I have the Encore Tweed one. I have two more Noro Ito ones. I have the Lumen. Basically, yeah. when we're left alone, unattended in the shop, she's half the time wandering around going, ooh, I could do this. Yeah. Like, there's so many. It, this is one of the very few patterns I think I've done more than once. I think there's a handful that I've done more than once. Or, or like, maybe you've done some more than once, more than I have. But this one... It's always kind of fun, especially if you're trying out new color combos. And and we see that, I see that all the time on the Facebook, um, hap, like Butterfly Knit Along, K-A-L page. It's where people go who, it started off as a knit along and now it's just like a group. And um, people are always doing new ones in different colors and or different combos or different, what will this do? What will that do? You know, it's really fun. That so. it's, it's been my happy place. And yes, I have a lot. And so, and it helps that it made people watch our show. In the well, beginning. <laughs> when, when, when the question came up, how many do you have on needles? I've been telling everybody I've finished 10 to 15 and I have 10 to 15 on needles. I finished 10 to 15 and I have probably 20 on needles. Like, yeah. So it helps to be reminded of how many I have on needles because mm -hmm. we talk about starting them on the show and then I forget. And then do we ever finish them? Well, maybe sometimes. Maybe. But yes, I've started, I started the Encore one. I've, you know, <laughs> like, I'm just like, ooh, let me, you know, and it's not that my heart's not in it anymore when they sit unfinished. It's, it's just, ooh, ooh, we can I try something else. I found another literal butterfly to chase. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm a butterfly chaser. I go, ooh, that's cool. Oh, wait, look at that one. Well, and, and with the I've papillons, been, they, they actually really are butterflies. They are. Literally and figuratively. What? Um, and see, I have the added uh, 
burden, challenge, joy, whatever you want to call it, of for the shop. And here I'm, I've just finished my row six um, on this. Yay. Mm. So I'm done with my contrast color. I can start my regular color. Um, I can't only do the Papillon. I have to do, other, I mean, it's not like I have to, but I feel like this is part of what's keeping my shop in business is to do a lot of different things at once because different people are going to be inspired by different things. Not everyone wants to do a Papillon. I think it would be great if they did, but um, we more have people saying, oh, I couldn't do that. And they can. And, and sometimes it just takes time and patience. And again, going row by row. The, the by first row. one is always the most difficult because you're getting used to it. Um, we also have people who just don't like it and that's okay too. Like if you don't like it, don't make it. No problem. But if the reason you're not doing it is because you think it's too challenging, um, I'm willing to help you uh, virtually or, you know, I can do short sessions without getting into a class on it. But I think I do a very good class on it, both over Zoom. I've done it before. It's been a while, but I could get back in the swing of things. Um, or in person, I have, if people buy the yarn from me and talk to me enough about it. Like I have a, not a cheat sheet so much. It's a companion sheet that can help you make sense of it. That works much better with the class. I've, I've handed it out to some people who are really excited about doing it here when they buy yarn for it in the shop, but it's more, um, it works really well if you take a class with me. So not that you have to pay me money to get it. But um, you do, you, I would ask you to buy yarn from our shop to get it. So, you know, at the very least, because um, I put a lot of work into that to helping you make sense of it. But um, I also, on top of that, so I've got, I do love the Papillons. I need to be making lots of other things to inspire people who want to try other things. And then I have all the things that have caught my eye recently that I do because I'm going through my own stuff and and there might be the overflow of the things i'm doing that will help my soul might actually inspire you too right so <laughs> and then there's things like my niece's birthday <sighs> I, I i will say that with the papillon you want to find a pretty good contrast mm -hmm. you don't you can make them in similar colors like, like her black and off my black, black and off but, black. but no it's gonna maybe it's get gonna confusing and, black, or, and it's going to be difficult to see and all the fun work in it it's really it it's neat to pick a high contrast because it shows off all the work you're doing yeah. so you know um this is one of the examples yeah. of maybe simple yarn busy pattern yeah. but a simple yarn that changes color can cut down on the work that you, you need to do. You will need so. about 50 stitch markers for the entire. Yeah. Our cocoa knit stitch markers, which come in packs of about 60, if you're buying the smaller ones, when, once you go up to the jumbo size, they're not 60, but they're perfect for a papillon because you have 60 and you, you use most of them by the end. If you're marking every 10 stitches, according to I, her method of marking stitches, I really need to which see we really recommend sets of stitch markers I own like I can look that up for you I know you can <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I want to I own multiple packs too because I have multiple papillons and other projects on needles and like picking up projects I go oh look th there's where some of my stitch markers went every now and then so. part of the reason I finish a papillon is because I need the stitch markers for another one <laughs> with that many like papillons on needles oh my lord she probably owns more size 10 needles between nines and like 10 and a half more needles than we've ever stocked in the shop. Well, we not have more stocked because them because, she, because she's bought them at one time, <laughs> but, um, she more than we have in stock definitely at once in the shop. Definitely. And it's the same thing for stitch markers. So she's half the reason I keep ordering things like that. And you, you guys are the other half. So, you know, um, Okay, we have to go open the shop now. I knew that was going to take at least as long as we usually film, right? Oh, yeah. We got going a few minutes just, today. Just so right? y'all know, I did bring all of this in, in an Ikea carry -all. Except for the ones that were already here. Yeah. Yeah, but most of what she brought in, there's a little, the big blue Ikea bag back there. Um, so we love questions like this. If, if you have something, you want to see stuff that we've done or what, you know, this is what Dear Becky and Lizzie is all about. You give us direction and we do our best to run with it. So write us a letter or send us an email. So emails go to 
Liz at sundragonartandfiber.com. All spelled out, and it's in the description if you need it. Um, if you want to write us a letter, which we will lovingly keep, or a card, you can send it to Dear Becky and Lizzie, Sun Dragon Art and Fiber, 35 South Broad Street, Brevard, North Carolina, 28712. Um, schedule, we, have, we are not filming tomorrow morning. I have lessons. I have two lessons. Hopefully someone's learning to knit and someone is working on projects with me. And uh, we have knit night after work though. Sign up to come in for an appointment. Um, we, we might, if you show up without an appointment at the shop, we might let you in with a mask, but it depends on what's happening in the shop, especially if there's people in the shop. Appointments guarantee you time and space in the shop. It's still the best way to do everything. Um, more and more health agencies are saying because of Delta variant, even if you're vaccinated, you should consider strongly wearing a mask inside, which is why we have gone one better and said, you need to wear a mask inside our shop. If you don't wanna wear a mask in our shop, we, we can understand and respect that, but that means we will help you outside. We will still help you, but you won't have the overwhelming experience of drowning in yarn in here. So literally wear a mask. We offer paper ones at the door. We got them for you. Um, back to what I was saying, knit night, tomorrow night, um, I, I know. Tomorrow night, she's going to knock on the door. I know. And she's going to watch this later and go, oops. Um, 6 to 9 p.m. Hopefully Liz will come back as we're wrapping this up. 6 to 9 p.m. Shop phone number gets you in. It's 828-877-3550. And we will let you in from the weight room. And um, we are going to be... I'm getting distracted. I'm sorry. We are going to be open on Saturday. So you can come um, sign up for an appointment. You can come inside um, if we have space inside on Saturday, but there's no guarantee. You can shop with us outside on Saturday. I think Saturday is supposed to be a nice day. So um, 10 to 5, we'll be here. Sunday will be off. Monday will be off. I'll be doing all kinds of things at home. And then we hit our schedule next week. So join us. We'll have something up on Tuesday-ish, even though I have to do something at the regular time on Tuesday. So um, Liz is already helping a customer. Bye. She's saying bye from over there. Um, we will see you next week. Come to Knit Night. Subscribe. Consider, consider doing the Patreon, signing up to support us on Patreon, and you can get your name in the credits. If uh, monetarily uh, you're not able to support us or don't care to and that's okay too thank you for being part of our community consider subscribing to this channel and um we love y'all and miss you even those we have not met yet and we're already blooping and ringing people up so i gotta go um we'll see you next week have a good weekend bye